Hello and welcome to Inside the Innovation. My name is John Feldman. I'm delighted to be joined by Chad Goldsmith, who is the industry solutions architect for Salesforce. Chad, how is it going? What What are you architecting for industries these days? <laughs> hey, John. Uh, it's going good. We're, we've got a lot going on, um, especially now that uh, COVID is here. We've got a lot of people thinking about uh, new solutions and and uh, how they're communicating with with customers in new ways, things that that I didn't uh, have to think about back in the day when I was on uh, on the retail side. So it's been been interesting, um, but there is a lot of innovation going on. So it's uh, exciting from that perspective. It is it is exciting times in e-commerce. Absolutely, I think that we have sort of similar experiences on the retail side of e-commerce, and it's really exciting to see sort of like stuff blooming again. Um, yeah, wow. exactly, exactly. Totally. Renaissance for, from from a technology side. Totally. Yeah. It's great stuff. So we're going to be talking about order management and holiday more broadly. So I wanted to start out by saying that, you know, order management is really becoming an, a, a point of differentiation, even beyond selection and price. And, you know, it's really now a key part of sort of the experience of a company. So, you know, how can companies prepare to make sure that they're delivering the best possible fulfillment experience, particularly as, you know, we see volume come up and down and, and it's it's trickier than ever? Yeah, you know, there's a couple ways to look at it. There's some things, especially with holiday spikes, that you just can't do anything about. Um, you know, it could be uh, thinking back in my experience. I, I actually had my own retail brand at one time, and uh, during the holidays, we had a FedEx truck roll out of our warehouse and get in an accident, and start on fire oh, no. halfway down the interstate. <laughs> oh no! Uh, when I was at Harry and David, we you know dealt with a lot of perishable goods, you know, flowers even, and um, so. Part of it is realizing there are going to be things that happen. It just, it's the way it is and um, what you can do about it. And so the things I always have focused on and I see successful retailers focusing on is about communication, getting out ahead of the problems, um, having a holiday uh, readiness plan, uh, you know, over preparing. I got my start in logistics in the Navy and uh, a very complex logistics and fulfillment operation there. There's a lot going on. So it was kind of instilled in me to uh, to always prepare uh, holiday readiness uh, meetings, make sure that you can deal with the volumes that are going to happen when there is a, a, an issue, when there is a supply chain disruption, you know, with products coming in or something uh, on the outbound that you're not flooded with with calls and uh, you're able to handle that. So, you know, those are good good places to look at where things might break and where uh, automation can really step in and, and help out with that. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, communication as a key way of making sure that even if things aren't going perfectly, that your customers really know what's going on. And it's, you know, as you were describing planning for holiday, it occurred to me that, you know, so many retailers are coming off of really a supply chain, supply chain shock after COVID where, you know, things that traditionally weren't in high demand or in huge demand and stuff that you expected to move was sitting on the shelf. So it's hopefully for all of us, this, this will be an easier time. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I get an email today from somebody from a, a consulting uh, firm and they said they've never had so many supply chain conversations in, in retail. And, uh, and even myself, I'm having a number of those as well. And I had, I had started my, uh, my MS in supply chain, uh, a few years ago before I moved to Oregon and I'm finishing, I'm excited to go back. I didn't, I didn't realize that it was going to be so relevant. Uh, so it inspired me to go back this semester and, uh, and wrap it up. So, um, but it is, uh, going back and reading some of my old papers around supply chain disruption and, uh, quality management. It's it, a lot of those are still relevant and a lot of the topics were around, you know, identifying your key suppliers, having a communication mechanism in place before things get bad so that you can get quick responses and then communicate to your customers as well. It must have also been interesting to go back and look at those with the experience of, you know, being at Harry and David and having run these huge, you know, these huge supply chains. Did you yeah. feel like you were, how were your insights back then? Yeah, well, it was funny. Like I thought the Navy was complex. Like Harry and David was uh, a whole different animal. I and mean, we'd actually surveyed people at, at one point and a large percentage of people don't know that Harry and David actually grows and bakes a, a majority of their product assortment. So from my office, I could look out and see pear trees. So there, it, it takes the supply chain back to a whole new area um, that I wasn't even familiar with on the agricultural side. And when you pick and 
how weather temperatures might impact your forecasted forecasted production. Uh, so so there was that aspect, and then just dealing, as I mentioned, with some of the the outbound, of getting getting products to customers where you might have a greenhouse uh, have a, a an issue and you lose flowers, or you might have pineapples stuck on a loading dock somewhere. Those type of things, you know, some of them are weather. They'll, they happen every year. I think this year, you we could see more of that as you see, um, you know, people on uh, loading docks get sick or, you know, they don't have enough people to actually manage the process. Um, also, I'm sure everybody's already seeing the strain right now on the, the common carriers, UPS, FedEx, and others as they try to keep up with the where as everybody shifts to digital and this this uh, increased um, volume that's going out there. So, but yeah, that was um, that was definitely an MBA and uh, fulfillment and logistics from a retail perspective. Uh, anything that could possibly go wrong, you know, could in that environment. But you know, I, I tell you the thing that Harry and David did about it, my team did about it is. You know their their customer satisfaction was you know 110 percent if you had an issue you know we talked to peasement all day we empowered customer service agents to be able to do partial refunds replace orders so that we didn't get stuck in this i got to go talk to my manager or supervisor situation so that's another area from the preparedness i think retailers can do is make sure that they have those kind of uh pass some power on to people to make some decisions so that they can can keep those customers happy, knowing that that issues are going to pop up. Uh, it's really smart, so that issues can be resolved immediately rather than snowballing. Exactly. And, you know, I actually once worked in Medford, Oregon, and had been past the Harry and David plan, and I'd heard that like two thirds of the volume happens over the holiday. I mean, just some huge amount compared yeah. to the rest of it. Yeah, they yeah the the teams are pretty explosive. And I think that's why, you know, when I think about preparedness, I also think about onboarding seasonal employees, uh, people that are touching and communicating about uh, orders. Um, not only was 75% of the, the business in that period, but I think 75% of the staff from a service perspective and supply chain were also during that same window. So there were people that hadn't actually interacted with the brand as an employee for, you know, three quarters of the year and they're coming in. So tools to help them get familiar with procedures and new product lines. And um, it was a pretty big undertaking to get, especially for service agents, to get them through that process of, of getting fam familiar with the product assortment for that year and what they could, couldn't do uh, with an order. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of areas to think about the, the, person I reported to, the, the senior VP at Harry and David was a former army ranger. So we did, <laughs> we had holiday readiness. My daughter was born on September 8th. We call it in season there. That was, that was the busy period. I believe we started our seven day a week meetings, October 1st. So wow. all the management staff was, was there every day. We met with uh, supply chain every morning to find out if there were any disrupt uh, disruptions on products coming in or out of stocks. We also met with the outbound team. Uh, Harry and David has runs their own trucks out of Medford, so that and then they actually have two, uh, two other distribution centers that they use as well. So it's uh, it's quite an operation. It's really, I mean, just anecdotally, you know, I, I worked at a large furniture retailer, and their order management system was this old AS four hundred thing, and the only people that could work on it were people who were in the Navy. I apparently had you know all the training. So it, it's really interesting that so many of the logistics these logistics uh, processes are are uh, are run by you know ex military people. Um, the other thing you said that I thought was really interesting is that when you do have such a seasonal workforce, it's like how are you able to you know how do you, you have to make sure that your systems are bulletproof so that when you have someone who really needs to be effective on them needs to be able to learn it really quickly and then needs to be able to you know not crash things as they do it. That's a it's a really interesting challenge. It is. It's you know one getting them trained on it and two making sure they can effectively take an order. Um, you know, I've, I've been at places and I've worked with retailers that are running 20 year old order management systems. And I always kind of joke, it's you're spending a week training them how to do control F4, hit the, sh the shift key with, you know, their elbow to be able to add a new line to the order instead of telling them how to upsell a product or cross sell a product. It's, um, it's a lot of time spent on those older, older systems. So it's, it's been interesting to see the order management landscape for technology really shift more towards service focus. 
so that you have all those tools right in front of you to be able to interact uh, with those customers instead of swivel seating to six different uh, systems to, to find out what's going on with an order. And it's interesting because that really sort of parallels some of the core arguments around Salesforce and its CRM product is that, you know, unify everything to one place, make sure you don't have to go to a bunch of systems. And it's interesting to see that now playing out in the same way, sort of between commerce and order management systems. Yeah, it's great timing because right now that's such an important thing. I think, uh, you know, I, I've had experience in organizations where, you know, Harry, Harry and David, for example, where you know you could have a customer that has a food blog, and the clock is ticking right away when there when there's some sort of issue that comes up, and if you're having to run to one system for chat, one for email, one for the order management system, one for the commerce system, staple some paper packet together, gather to to hand it up for review on what the problem was. It's you know, I, I've seen three or four people working on one specific customer order like that, trying trying to track it down. And I think now when people aren't working in physical proximity to each other, we have, you know, virtual uh, call center agents working at home. They can't go to their neighbor. They can't, you know, walk two doors down or two desks down and, and have a conversation. They really need that in front of them. Otherwise, you know, the, the biggest nightmare in servicing during the holiday season is to see your your call center board start backing up into calls in queue. And then the ultimate nightmare is abandonment because you don't get those back in the holiday season. People, you know, especially people that are ordering the last couple of weeks, they're ordering, they need it that day. And if you don't have it, if you can't communicate with them, if they're on hold, they're going to move on to, to somebody else. And that ties back into that get as much self-service and automation going, get those customers help, like when is my delivery date so that your agents are freed up to actually deal with things so that you're not backing up and losing losing those customers. And it's interesting as well, because you know earlier you talked about sort of enabling your agents to completely resolve a problem on the spot was really key to sort of you know, a, a well-functioning, you know, customer service order management appeasement situation. But then also, you know, with with now customer service primarily taking place in people's homes, it's sort of, you're also saying it has to be that way because if, exactly. if the agent can't resolve it right there sitting on their seat, like it isn't going to get resolved. So right. I mean, that's really interesting. Right. A lot of retailers, especially catalog, you know, uh, retailers like Griffin Catalog, the agents actually in the call centers would have a stack of catalogs or a book or a binder book on their desk to go through. They would have, you know, printed uh, procedures as well, or they would just raise their hand and the supervisor would come by and, and answer a question for them. That's, you know, that's not happening right now. And you, you have to find a way to surface that information for agents. So, you know, it's, it's moving into something, you know, we, we talk a lot about, surfacing order history and the customer information in, in a single pane of glass, so to speak, but um, other things like popping up knowledge base articles on how to handle a return, how to handle an exchange. So that's there kind of following along as, as the associate moves through looking at different areas of the order. And I've seen some, some retailers do some really interesting things with predictive CSAT uh, scores and things using artificial intelligence to assist the agent to say, this is what you actually should be doing. You know, this customer will respond to an appeasement more than they would to a refund or replacement. Uh, it's just any tool that you can give them uh, is going to help out. And I think that that follows suit to every group in the organization. So that supply chain people have that same, you know, what's the weather coming in? Um, as I'm looking at it, not just that there's six products in a in a bin somewhere, but you know what possibly could go wrong with that that order either getting replenished or or going out the door. Really great. All right, last question, Chad. So holidays coming up, we've talked a lot, sort of in broad strokes. Uh, what's the best tip if I'm if I'm like staring at holiday? I've made it through COVID. What's the number one thing that I should do to prepare? Well, I think that the last word you said, right? The prepare the holiday readiness. So make sure you have points of contact in all of the different teams uh, that you've reviewed communication procedures with your top vendors and suppliers, and that you have uh, quick and easy access and visibility to things like um, weather patterns or, you know, do I have a disruption? Um, I'm seeing a lot of really cool things in Tableau, uh, you know, actually looking at 
where patterns are and where returns are spiking or missed deliveries or delays. So get some sort of uh, overall view in your operation so you're not looking at an individual order and saying, hey, there's something wrong with this order and not realizing it's because everybody in the eastern part of Wisconsin, which is where I grew up, uh, is snowed in and nobody's getting any, any deliveries. It'd be a great opportunity to know that and actually proactively communicate to those people to say, hey, we know you're in this part of the state. We know there are delays coming into the order. We're already on top of it. And you know, if it's going to be a major issue, you can start looking at that point on what action do you want to take? So those are all things you can pre-plan to get ready for. Because um, once it starts, like that, you know, that season, that six weeks, that four weeks, there's no coming back from it. So there's no bonus out. days. <laughs> there's no bonus. There's no redos. There's no do-overs. It's just, it is what it is. And after that point, like there's, you, you just, you know, you can't come back from it. So um, if you're, if you're doing something new this year, make sure you looked at it three or four times. I know first year that I was involved in pop-up stores, like in malls, a um, whole different concept of training and technology and, and how much product they have. So just look for the areas that are going to break. Use your consumer hat and think about bad experiences you've had in the past. And it kind of helps drive you to the areas that are going to be the most challenging. Awesome. And it's it's interesting, as you, you sort of touched on, is sort of the technology enables a better consumer experience and the consumers expect a better experience. And so like it's it sort of it's faster and faster until it's, you know, same minute delivery, I guess. Yeah, the um, <laughs> expectations are up every year. Definitely. We see that over and over in, in surveys that we do. Totally. You're, you're judged by the person's last best experience, right? Exactly. Chad, this has been an outstanding conversation. I really want to thank you for your time. Um, yeah, thanks, people John. want to learn more about you, where can they find out more? Uh, probably the best place is, is uh, they can go to LinkedIn. Uh, they can go to Twitter as well, Chad Goldsmith, and uh, check it out there. And um, yeah, I'm always happy to share thoughts and insights from both the technology and being you know, on the retail side of the table as well. So thanks Sounds for great. the time. My pleasure. Thanks, Chad. And thank you for joining us. Have a great day.